Hey guys, welcome to another video in this extra series. Today we're going to talk about why a declining stock price can actually be the best thing that can ever happen to a drip investor. Now, we're going to go through uh, a few scenarios here. And for that scenario, we're going to take into account that we're using a non-taxable account, that we're putting in $5,000 every year, we're investing for a period of up to 35 years because I imagine that most of you guys are either in your 20s or 30s, so we're gonna give ourselves 35 years. We're gonna use a DRIP, so a dividend reinvestment plan. We're gonna have, uh, let's say our stock has a price per share of about $10, and the initial yield will be 3.5% with an annual dividend growth rate of 8.5%. All right, so it uh, it meets our uh, our chowder rule. So for those of you who don't know what a chowder rule is, uh, you can go check out my video on the on the chowder rule uh, in the extra series. And um, so what we're going to look at today is the stock price. What kind of effect does the stock price have on the compounding for a dividend investment strategy? Okay, so for the first scenario, we're going to use a 0% fluctuation in stock price annually. So the stock will stay at exactly $10 for 35 years. Okay, so it's not moving at all, which is a highly unlikely situation. And bear in mind, all of these are highly unlikely because none of these uh, situations are are likely to maintain and be such uh, and be that stable for 35 years. It's it's unlikely, guys. See, you know, it's it's almost impossible. So, anyways, zero percent change in uh, in stock price for the first uh, scenario. At year ten, we're up to seventy-five thousand dollars, and remember, we're contributing five thousand dollars every single year. So, year ten, we're up to seventy-five thousand. Year twenty, two hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Year thirty, we're already up to two point two million, and year thirty-five, we're up to ten million dollars. All right. Scenario number two, let's say our stock price actually increases ever so slightly year after year. Let's say it increases by 1% year after year. So a very, very small growth. What kind of effect does that have on our drip scenario? Okay, so plus 1% growth Okay, on the stock price. At year 10, for scenario number two, year 10, we're at $77,000. Year 20, we're at $290,000, so pretty similar there to a 0% growth. And why is that, guys? We'll see in a few seconds. Year 30, we're only up to $1.7 million. In year 35, only $6 million. That's almost half of what we could have had if we didn't have any growth at all. So that growth, that growth is actually slowing down our drip because what our drip does is that it buys back shares and the cheaper those shares are, the more we can buy with that same amount of dividend every single year. So if we buy less stock one year, then we have less dividend coming in from those stocks that we've purchased, and then we can buy less stock, especially if they're more expensive, even more so the year after, because they're an extra percent uh, more expensive. And every single year that adds up, so we buy less and less and less and uh, compared to what we could have bought if they were a 0% growth. So now let's look at the opposite. Let's look at if that stock price is actually going down by 1% every single year. So the stock gets cheaper with every single drip that we get, we're able to buy more shares. Since we bought more shares, we get more dividends because the dividends are on a per share basis and we get more dividends, we buy more shares, they are even cheaper, we get more dividends, etc., etc. It's a big snowball effect, guys, here. It's the big, uh, the, uh, the effect of compounding that comes into effect here. So minus 1% growth on the stock price. At year number 10, we're at $72,000. Year number 20, $297,000. So all in all, pretty similar here. Year 30, $3.1 million, and year 35, $20 million, okay? Like I said, guys, this scenario is very unlikely because like we've uh, we've assumed a dividend growth rate of 8.5%, yet the stock price has been going down 1% every single year, which is highly unlikely because the stock price decline probably reflects uh, something wrong in the company because nothing would be such, uh, would be so sustained 
has to explain a 1% drop for 35 years in the stock price, guys, other than there's something wrong with the company and the company would not keep increasing its dividend year after year. That's just a nonsense, okay? But it's just to reflect what kind of effect it can have on our compound and drip situation. Now let's take it a little bit further, minus 3% every single year on the stock price, guys. Minus 3%, so it goes back 3% uh, in terms of that price. So year number 10, we're up to $67,000. Year number 20, we're already up to $330,000. Year number 30, 8 million. And year number 35, 120 million dollars okay again this is absolutely impossible but it's just to show what kind of effect what kind of kick in the butt kind of effect it can have on our drip situation it's really all about that compounding and all about that snowball effect you guys if you get more shares you get more dividends if you get a lower stock price you can buy more shares with that same dividend and then get more dividends after that so it's all about that trampoline effect that snowball effect so guys uh, it just gives you more options when you're looking at a company and you've, and you've determined your uh, evaluation your intrinsic evaluation uh, of that company and you see a stock price decline even on the short term it can be a very very beneficial thing to you not only because it gives your drip an opportunity to buy more shares at a cheaper price and give you more uh, dividends for the next 30 years, even if it just lasts for a few months and you have a monthly dividend, if the stock price declines, you can get more shares and that gives you a baseline of more shares to compound for the next 30 years, even if the price goes back up. So that's already a good sign and the next uh, best thing that can happen Actually, the, the second advantage that it can give you is that you can yourself purchase more shares using your cash and sort of give yourself that baseline, that cushion of extra shares at a lower price and uh, just keep riding that wave even if the stock re-increases uh, after a few months or a few years. So two advantages here of a declining stock price for a drip investment strategy. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment down below, leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to uh, subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And you can, uh, you can subscribe to uh, my Twitter if you want to be notified as soon as a video comes out. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.